Is that correct? Right. Yes. So that is why I always uh, tell my students that when you are in a debate, it is not the speed of your talk, the fluency that you what you what you say that is important, but mostly the assessment will be on the idea. Jadi anak-anak debat itu lebih cenderung pada sing penting mau kau ngomong cepat. Padahal kadang-kadang aku ngurung apa itu gak ngerti. Ini jangan ini ngomong apa sih? Apa topiknya itu tentang apa? Tapi dia ngomong apa? Tapi they want to get to to what is it? To impress the jury that they can talk fluently. Ini 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 dulu saya belum belum apa ya? Belum membuat apa? Ya seperti sekarang ini kan karena karena dia praktisi um, debat gitu ya. Itu masih asumsi saya dulu, ketika saya masih aktif diri debat. Itu pesan saya adalah, karena anak debat ini cenderung ngomong, pokoknya ngomong, yang penting itu tujuh menit yang dia pakai itu terpakai semuanya. Sedangkan idenya kadang-kadang ngalor ngidul, ngetan ngulon gak jelas. Padahal kami juri itu fokus pada yang diomongkan dia itu apa. Kemudian dia ngumpani pembicara selanjutnya itu bagaimana? Jadi sebenarnya ada 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 ini ya ada apa? ada rules. The, the first speaker should be talking about what, and then the second speaker, and then the third speaker, kan begitu sebenarnya. And the fourth speaker because in a group normally we have four four speaker, two um, uh, pros and two against. Ada delapan satu kali main itu delapan. Nah, jadi eh, ternyata asumsi saya tidak salah. Jadi ini sudah pengakuan yang yang jujur dari seorang itu. Oke, okay, that, that's fine. So they lack of the monitor. Ya, jadi debat eh, eh, atau itu, they mostly concentrate on the fluency of what we talk. So they do not monitor the content. Belum lagi nanti kalau monitor hipotesis ini dikaitkan dengan uh, whether what they speak is grammatically correct or not. Jadi mereka itu pokoknya merupakan semua ngomong, tapi kadang-kadang grammarnya juga mabut dan mereka nggak sadar kalau itu apa mabut. Bukan karena apa-apa, tapi karena mereka dikejar. They are chased by the time that they have to speak in seven minutes. Nah, in my opinion, seven minutes talking is a very long session untuk saya loh ya. Jadi tujuh menit itu sebenarnya very long session untuk speaking. So this should be thinking about how the language, how the content, and then how the language. But they mostly miss it. Oke, okay, jadi ini misi saya sebagai juri data ternyata tidak sama. Oke, okay. and then next we have the input hypothesis. What is it input hypothesis? As you mentioned previously, that when you learn your first language, you mostly listen to your parents, your society, and that is the input. Just like similar to that, uh, the input hypothesis when you learn a second language or a foreign language. The more input you have, the more you will acquire the language. And the input here should be related with the scales of the student. That is why it is related with by understanding messages or receiving comprehensible input. What is a comprehensible input? That is an input that you can digest. That is why uh, now in the literacy program, we uh, what is it? Encourage students to have lots of graded materials to read a number of graded material. Why is it? Because in graded materials you will have um, what is it? List of books, a number of books uh, in which the level of difficulty of the sentences or grammar. The level of difficulty of the uh, vocabulary has been selected. 
Jadi jangan ragu untuk menyuruh anak menggunakan graded books atau mungkin kalau misalnya listening ya graded materials for the uh, listening. And normally uh, the the graded materials for reading is accompanied by or is completed by the one in the recording format. Jadi biasanya ada dua. Ini dulu cara belajar saya ketika saya belajar bahasa asing ini jadi lebih banyak pakai uh, credit reader dulu. Jadi saya banyak acquiring itu justru lewat credit reader. Meskipun dulu saya nggak tahu teori ini, tapi sebagai anak kecil dulu ya memang saya umek dengan bacaan-bacaan sederhana. And then we also have the affective filter hypothesis. What is affective filter hypothesis? This is related with your affection. Whether you feel positive with the language that you learn or not. If you think that your the language that you learn is useful or is important for you, for your future, then you are going to learn it easily. While if you don't think that uh, it is important, then uh, you will not learn it seriously. Then the result will be a discouraging course. Yeah. So this is related with a mental block that prevents the acquirer from fully utilizing the contents of reconnaissable input for acquisition. Yeah. So. Well, I live in Surabaya for many years, almost 50 years. Even though Surabaya is close to Madura, and there are a lot of Madurese people who live in Madura, because I do not have uh, something related with the Madurese, I do not speak Madurese at all. Why is it? Because I don't think that Learning Madurese is something which is important. Sederhananya begitu saja. Tapi kenapa kok saya tahu bahasa Sunda? Bahasa Sunda karena ya banyak keluarga saya yang di Jawa Barat. Sehingga akhirnya ya mau tidak mau. In order that I know what you talk, then I, I learn Sundanese. Meskipun Sundanese is not spoken in Surabaya. It's not widely spoken in Surabaya. Jadi itu adalah salah satu afektif filter saya. Lalu bagaimana apakah ini lima ini teori lima ini adalah teori yang baku? Ya sementara baku. But in the 2020s, in the 20 in the 20th century, there is another um, hypothesis that is related with the uh, interactional interactional hypothesis. What is it? When uh, the language is will be acquired, then there is an interaction, and there is an interaction between the teachers and the students, an interaction between the text and the and the reader. Nah, jadi ada uh, interaksi di situ. Nanti juga akan ada yang lain. Nah, di sini kemudian ada oh, sorry, kok hilang. Nah, input knowledge output. Ya. Nah, inputnya ini apa? Experiences across the learner. Ini bisa implicit, bisa explicit. Jadi inputnya itu eh, misalnya kita baca. When when we read something, it can be that we acquire something. We know new words, for example, not because of that we are introduced by the teacher, but we know the language from what we read. Jadi misalnya anak yang suka mendengarkan lagu, ya, when you like to listen to songs, to English songs, so um, unconsciously you will be learning the pronunciation. You will be learning some new words. 